to The Real. Ladies, what an amazing week it's been. But it's not over yet, because ladies, we got some girl chat coming right at you. How you feel? You ready for it? Yes. Yes. So yes. Ready. Let's do it. I'm so excited. Let's do it. Me too, me too. So listen to this. Last year, tons of companies made promises to consumers to do more when it comes to addressing racial bias. And this week, makeup brand Sephora, that we all love, released a preliminary action plan to address bias across its various platforms. So some of these items included doubling their assortment of black-owned brands by the end of the year, and also reducing so security in stores to minimize shoppers' concerns of policing. So ladies, I'm curious, what do you think of these changes? Do you feel like it's enough? And what other changes would you like to see when we're already talking about this? Um, I think it's about time. What is taking so long for these um, stores and these brands to know that we, we buy this stuff too? I mean, why aren't they doing that? The fact that they want to take out security is great, but can we hire more black employees? Can we bring more yes. brands that are for us into the stores? And also, can they just assume that we can afford these things as well? Like, I don't understand where, where like, someone said, oh, you know what, black people can't afford to buy makeup. Black people can't, like, where did that come from? That we're so undervalued in that. We're a consumer just like everybody else, and we need to see representation when we walk into the stores, the images that they show, the colors, the shades, the, you know, all those things, we need to have representation as well. So to me, it's like, you guys are way too late. Let's get on with it already. Well, in 2019, um, the, the uh, singer SZA put out a tweet saying that she, um, she reportedly was being followed by a security person um, in the store. And... Yeah. That kind of resulted to them shutting down the stores for one hour to have in inclusivity training. Now, they said it wasn't based on Scissors, but it happened right after Scissors' tweet. Just recently, comedian Leslie Jones, her makeup artist, claims that she dealt with discrimination also when she went to one of their stores. And, you know, that a, a lot of people are claiming... They're claiming that they're being mistreated in these stores. So I think, you know, it's so hard being black in this country. I'm like, we have to keep doing these stories. And this is the reason why what the NAACP is actually asking to implement is a cabinet for uh, racial bias. And I think this is like one of the things that, you know, could actually be investigated because sometimes these yeah. corporations, they don't care. But now that, you know, we as consumers are saying, hey, this is happening over and over again. Now they're trying to maybe do something about it. I don't know if taking out the security guard is going to help because it's like a third yeah. party security guard reportedly. So I don't weird. understand that. I think it's like you training and I agree with you, uh, Garcelle, put Put more black employees, and we're talking about all, of all colors, yes. you know, all you right. know, all nationalities, all races. Yeah. And actually, it's about training and understanding. If somebody is shoplifting, there is a certain policy that you need to have if you think they're shoplifting. Right. But you can't assume because they're black and they pick up, you know, a, a, a thing that they're shoplifting. You can't do that. And so that has right. to change. It's all about training. I agree with you, and I also wonder why. Like, I wonder why a lot of the CVSs and Walgreens, only in certain neighborhoods, have everything chained up. You know what I mean? Sometimes if I go mm. to a Beverly Hills Walgreens, I can easily reach the lashes. I can help myself to the liners and sit there, as we women do, and compare colors. But then if I go to one maybe in Inglewood, then they're all chained up. I have to ask somebody. And they up. sit there. It's so awkward. They sit there and, and, and hold the key, unlocking the thing so that you can quickly make your decision so they can lock it back up and you leave. And I'm like, obviously there had to have been something that led you know, them to thinking they needed more extra security, or is it just the implication that because we're in this neighborhood, we have to go ahead and bar everything up because we don't even wanna face the risk of somebody or black people stealing here more or anybody that lives in this neighborhood being more susceptible to it. So it's just a very weird feeling. It changes the whole environment when you just wanna shop for makeup. So I'm proud of Sephora for leading the way. I'd like to see drugstores and more common available places do the same thing. 
Yeah. Because my thing is, this is why you need a policy to, to investigate these type of things. Because I would like to know, you know, if, if we look at, say, if we look at um, a report of how many things are stolen from a black neighborhood versus um, Beverly Hills neighborhood. Right. Let's see that. Neighborhood, right. And then that way you right. can say, okay, now we can, we, okay, maybe you have a little justification right. for locking up your stuff. Yeah. But you're not going to tell me, if you're trying to steal and you know the stuff is locked up in the black neighborhoods, you're going to go to uh, Beverly Hills. I, right. I'm just saying. <laughs> if you're trying to right. steal... So, but this is why we need policies and we need laws because you, you're you making a certain um, um, demographic of people feel bad about themselves. And right. not only that, yeah. you're making other people, like the employees, making assumptions that when they see somebody like me, oh, we better yeah, watch her, we better follow her. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's like so Ronnie's it saying that if this came from the White House, from the top, from policy that says we value these people, we don't make them feel uncomfortable in these spaces. And that becomes, and again, when it comes from the top of the top of the top of the top, that by the time it yeah. gets to the security person, it's not, let's not have security. No, let's just not have racist security. Let's not have prejudice <laughs> security that uh, that assumes that black people are stealing. It's not that we don't want right. security. I want to feel secure when I go in the store. I just want to feel just as secure as the white lady. I want to feel just as secure right. as the black girl. I want to feel just as secure as the Asian and the Indian. Like, that's what I want to feel for yes. everybody. But again, that comes from the top. That comes from yep. policy, from policy to who was the manager of the store? Is there a black manager of the store that has right. been employed? That we say we have, mm -hmm. you know, there's a black person, there's black people on the floor working. Th th that is so important. Also, you want to walk into a store and you want to be able to have a conversation with someone about the makeup and the foundation that you're choosing right. with someone that looks like you. Right, with someone what that concept. has the shade of your skin. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so you it can is go, about, oh, how does it, right. Does this right. work for well, you? Does this not work for you? Is this too gray? Is it too yellow? Right. But again, like Lonnie said, it has to come from the top and we need to start implementing that we are valued customers. We are all valued customers and we should be treated as such. And the only Agreed. way you can make change is if you feel like you being discriminated against, don't shop there. There's other places you That's can right. shop. I'm not saying, I'm Almighty, not saying like that Dollar. all Sephora's are like that. I'm not saying that. Find you a place that's going to treat you mm -hmm. right until we get this, because we're going to make these changes happen. Anyway, speaking that's of right. change, it was announced this week that Bachelorette Claire Crawley and her fiancé Dale Moss are ending things after getting engaged on the show. But Claire might not be single for long, because on the same day they announced their breakup, another contestant from the show named Spencer Robinson asked Claire out on the gram. That's right, he wrote coffee with a question mark on his Instagram story page and tagged Claire. So ladies, do you, what do you think about someone who shoot their shot, you know, this soon after breakup? It was like the same day. <laughs> <laughs> it's The Bachelor, they were making out with different people on the same day, within the same right. hour, within 15 Are we really minutes. Surprised? I have my moment with this person. <laughs> Uh, smoochy, smoochy. <laughs> Ten minutes later, uh, smoochy, smoochy. It's The Bachelorette. Like, it's, this is what this is. Doesn't shock me at all. And sadly, it was sadly, actually Adrian, nice play. It doesn't just happen on reality shows. Men are absolutely like life. that. The guy code is, oh, you done? Okay, cool, I'm gonna shoot my shot. Like, at all times. They'll shoot their shot if your ring is on. They'll shoot your shot if you're standing right there next to your man. They'll look mm -hmm. at you. Oh, come on. Don't be Ladies, surprised. have you ever gone through a breakup that was public and all of a sudden, like, people from the past show up and they're like, damn, babe, I'm sorry that didn't work out. You know, yes, anytime yep, you need a yes. shoulder to lean on, yes. look at my shoulder. Here it is, available <laughs> to you. It or happens. even people you Terrible. knew. Terrible. Or even guys who knew you <laughs> as a couple, the minute you're single, they're like, oh, so you know, I really wasn't friends with your ex that well. You know what I mean? Do you want to go out? <laughs> Couldn't stand have him. Want... Always thought he was terrible for you. Yes. yes. I you deserve better. Why you were with him. Right. I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Man, yeah, I don't think there's a guy code. Like, I think there's a girl <laughs> code, but there's definitely no guy code because he wants to shoot his None. shot right away in case somebody else slips in. But I think with this guy, um, 
who did it on the gram, he just wanted attention. He actually went after another yep. uh, another bachelorette before, so he's just doing it to get his 15 minutes, and he's getting it. We're talking about him. Exactly. There we go, but his go 15 ahead. minutes are up. Up next, it's only President Biden's first week in the White House, and he's already facing quite the scandal. It's being reported that the president may not be allowed to bring his Peloton bike into the White House because it poses a security risk. It's no secret that the president loves his daily exercise. I think that's so awesome. But the issue is that the bike has a microphone, a camera, and internet access, making it vulnerable to hackers. In fact, former First Lady Michelle Obama had to do a little tweaking to her Peloton as well, removing the mic and the camera from it. So ladies, what are your thoughts on this Peloton problem? They need Can to I fix just it say that my yeah, president him. need his exercise. He's 78 years old. Can I just say this? Find a way. Figure it out. Yes, the man is 78 years old. Get him, his, get him his Peloton. Get him exactly the chef he wants to keep his nutrients <laughs> intact. I want to make sure our president is in ship shape because he's got a lot of work That's to right. do. He's 78 looking young, and we want to keep him that way. I hate that picture where they show how a president has aged in their term, and it's a drastic difference. Look at President Obama. Yeah. Speaking of the Peloton that I'm sure he was on Michelle's bike. <laughs> Look at that. That's my president yeah. right there. So I am rooting for you, Mr. Biden. Get that man his Peloton and secure it up. Whatever they did for Michelle, they could do for him. The fact that we're talking about a Peloton bike and not breaking security because a tweet went out, because something crazy went out. We're talking about a Peloton bike. We talked yep. about, you know, um, Dad jeans for mom jeans for uh, for Obama. <laughs> I love Obama. that we're just we're keeping it light. We're not talking about security risks because a crazy tweet went out or people are doing crazy things. I will talk about Peloton all any all day long. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Up next, yes. people are calling Miss Dion Warwick the new queen of Twitter. But there's one thing you may not want to call her. Recently, Miss Dion had to stop a Twitter fight over a white fan who referred to her as Auntie. People were saying, if you're not black, you cannot refer to a black woman as auntie. However, Ms. Dion tweeted that he can call her auntie if he wants to, because she's everyone's auntie. And when Dish Nation picked up the story, she added that auntie is okay on Twitter, but in person, it's Miss Warwick. So ladies, mm -hmm. what do you think about this auntie etiquette? I was mad that he looked the same age as Dion. That's not that the, is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that was the the issue. It's like, but you know that what? There's this so this this thing because I like to be called Auntie Lonnie. But I have said this before, Garcelle, you're new to the show, so I want you to know that I am Auntie, but only it's a it's a cutoff. It's the age, sixteen, and you know, so like Under. the boys, your boys can call me Auntie. I'm with that, but over okay. sixteen, no, I'm Lonnie. Exactly. You know, I'm not, I, or sis, I could be sis. I'm all right with that, but no, no, no. Too many people all be calling me auntie. No, I'm not your auntie. I'm blind That's right. or sis. Yeah. So <laughs> wait, somebody wrote I up on Lonnie at forty something years old calling her auntie. No, it's, she's not your aunt. No. What's the age cutoff from the person? What's the age cutoff from 16. the person who's sixteen? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that I don't want to call anybody auntie unless you really are my auntie. I don't know where did this come from. <laughs> Yo, it's play a, auntie started in the church. Yeah, I feel like that the play auntie here. stuff. I, but that's why I stuck safe with cousin Jeannie. Cousin Jeannie is that girl that you don't always count on being uber responsible like Auntie Lonnie. Auntie Lonnie makes the decision. <laughs> She's the one that you're gonna call to bail you out of jail. Cousin Jeannie's a good time. She'll come watch your kids for a few hours. You might have fruit snacks for dinner, but it'll be fun. It'll be memorable. And also, cousin is ageless. So that's why I feel like it's a safe place to be. Yeah. Right. But recently, Lonnie, because I've been around so many more of my friends' kids as they grow up, they naturally mm. call me auntie because they're just taught that, you know, and a, a, mm. a, an older, cooler woman. Are they over 16? Yeah, they're not right? over 16. But I don't know why, I wouldn't mind it. I really, I love it. I think it's such an endearing, yeah. I, I, it makes me more family. I think the relationship Jeannie, makes a huge difference. Because Jeannie is like, right, right. But like, if, you're, if you call me Jeannie, 
and you're younger than me. I don't care if, you, let's say you're 20, you're 30, right? Then I'm like, yeah. oh, we sound like we're friends. But if you call me Auntie Jeannie, all of a sudden I feel like I'm in your family. Even if you're 20, 28, 30 years old, I don't know why. Is that well, weird? Well, I'm telling you, that I don't do find not it? call no. Oprah or, or Ava DuVernay <laughs> Auntie. They do not like that. Nope. Do not call them that at all. Okay, you know, said so that, right? Some people just don't and call. And that being just said... Mm-hmm. And that being said, don't call me auntie either. Unless I'm your aunt, don't call me that. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna ask it. Cause in my culture, you call them auntie, you never call them by their first name no matter what age you are. So is it a black thing? Really? Okay. All, All right. Vietnamese no, people, you always call them auntie. If, if, it, like, you said, you Adrian just said would not be you Adrian. Just said you cannot it's... say Adrian. You say go Adrian. Go means auntie Adrian. No matter what age you are. You do not say Adrian. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause the it sounds too Cause it's formal. disrespect. But it's T.T., yeah, right? No T.T., no, like, no sis, no auntie, no, none of that. <laughs> That's Spanish. T.T. is Spanish, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, could say, yeah you could say tia, but like Puerto Ricans say T.T. But okay, I think that we kind of were hitting something. Is it cultural? Jeannie, you just said they call you aunt, right? Yeah. They call me Jeannie. auntie, but they're, but even if they're 30 years old, even if they're just right underneath me, they can still call me that, and it's more respectful than to call me Jeannie. That's what I'm saying. I think it's not a culture thing. I think it's more of an age thing in women, and it's in and it and it determ and each woman we should respect whatever woman wants to be addressed. Whatever you want, let's just address them. And I like that Dion yeah. said, you know what? Outside of Twitter, call me Miss Warwick. Right. That's it. There you That's go. It. So yeah, I appreciate her being so forward and letting us know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, get ready to get your shoop on, ladies, because this Saturday Lifetime is premiering their highly anticipated Salt and Pepper original movie. Now, the movie, which takes a look at how the group achieved their groundbreaking success, will be immediate fo immediately followed by a Salt and Pepper interview special. And what a host, what a host, what a mighty good host they have. Uh, it is our very own Lonnie Love. Lonnie, you gotta hey, tell us all about yay. this. Yay, congratulations. Are you excited? You. Have you gotten to oh. see the movie yet? We want all the scoop. I got all of that. I got to see this uh, movie, and when it comes out this Saturday, you guys do not want to miss it. First of all, Salt and Pepper, 30 years of being a female Amazing. rap group, Grammy winners. Um, it takes you through the whole journey, and it, it from the beginning. Like it's things like you didn't know. Like um, they actually worked in a call center with Martin Lawrence. It's things like that. What you know? And it's that's yeah, so random. It, it goes through the whole like journey, and it talks about their relationships. You know their hits. We all know about Push It and things like that. And I want to give a shout out to Lifetime Television because they are hitting the the women of color biopics you know I think yeah that's true we were being overlooked um in some mm -hmm. spaces and I think Lifetime has taken it um and they're saying yeah. like you know they're gonna but do what Mahalia they did Jackson. with the Clark sisters they're doing Wendy Williams yes. they're doing the Clark sisters it's about time Amazing. so and the nice thing about this it's is that great. you see the whole movie is an hour and a half then I do an interview with the actual salt and pepper and I'm just gonna tell y'all so dip girls still working stuff out um, ah, are they? So what you're really? saying is it's gonna be juicy. I can't wait. It's gonna be juicy. It's, it's gonna be juicy. They still working Ooh. stuff out after 30 I'm getting my years. It's the reason why it was a breakup. <laughs> wow. You gotta watch the movie. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Wow. I am so curious. Do they do they delve into even like um like their personal relationships? Like uh yes. like I know that it's, Peppa was with Trash, like there. all of that. All of that is in this movie. It's done so good. For it to be a TV movie, Lifetime did its due. Yeah. And this is what happens when you're also the executive producers. They were exe executive producers of their own movie, so you're able to, you know, figure Make out sure and, that and put things in. Correctly. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I love, I love it. Well, I Lonnie, can't wait. I can't we actually wait. have a sneak peek of not just the movie, but the interview special as well. Check this out. Well, Pep, what about you? Why did you want your story told? And were you scared to, you know, expose? <laughs> a lot of stuff was exposed in this movie, sis. It was good, though. I, <laughs> I always said it's like a partnership with the fans, right? I like them to see the good and the bad. The bottom line is we're taking a meeting with Eddie O, and we're going to tell him what we want. I want them to be inspired that I fought for 
36 years, I, I, I fought. To this day, I fight <laughs> to keep going in this industry. Yeah. Wow. It's a lot Oh, I cannot wait. It is so much wow. fun. It is so revealing. I can't wait for you all to see Salt and Pepper. It premieres this Saturday night at 8 on Lifetime, followed by the Salt and Pepper interview special hosted by yours truly.